everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I just wanted to share with you uh, some of the books we've been reading for our Asia unit study. Uh, we follow the Build Your Library curriculum and we're doing the kindergarten year right now, which is focused on continents. And right now we're in the middle of Asia, have read most of the books that go with Asia, and I just wanted to share some of the literature that we've been reading that we've all enjoyed really so far. There hasn't been any that we haven't. So the first book we read, or the first book I'm going to show you, is Sammy and the Time of Troubles, and it takes place in Beirut. And this is about a boy who lives in a war-torn time in his country. And his father is actually dead, and does touch on that in the book. He died by way of a bomb going to market. And I really enjoyed this book and its illustrations. My kids actually liked it too. I, did, I don't mean to say actually as if they shouldn't have, but I wasn't sure if they would, but they did like it. And I did notice that as we read it, um, a somber mood would kind of overcome them and they would listen really intently. And then we had a lot of questions that we asked and talked about and about war and other places and how not every children, every child across the world um, gets to live in a place that isn't, you know, touched by war and tragedy and things of that nature. So I think this was a really good book. You know, not every children's book needs to be happy-go-lucky and I like that it touches on real world problems. And my kids get exposed to that because they need to know about that kind of stuff. The Librarian of Basra, a true story from Iraq. And this is a story about a librarian who lives in Iraq and she is desperate to save the book. She knows that the library is going to get bombed. And so she works with the people that live around her to get the books moved out and hidden. And in the end, you know, there's, the library did get bombed. And there still isn't a place to put all the books, but she did save them, you know, and then we're just kind of encouraged to dream about a time in the future when there will be a new library to put the books in. And this was a great story. Again, you know, the kids like the illustrations. Um, it wasn't too long. It did keep their attention, you know, and again, it brought up good questions, questions and about war and the things that people do sometimes that don't make sense or are violent and you know my five-year-old asked you know why would they want to destroy the books and you know I just tried to explain that people they don't think about books in times like those except for the librarian she did because they were very near and dear to her heart and she knew that one day she would get you know her country would come back to where it was and you know, people would have use for a library again. In the beginning, you know, she talks about how people used to come and discuss things in the library, matters of the world, matters of the spirit, and how, you know, she dreams of that happening again. So, a good story, kept the kids' attention, and again, I'm glad that this curriculum that we use, uh, I've been exposed to books and in, encouraged to expose my children to books that, again, are not all fairy tales and gumdrops, you know. This is real world stuff and it happens. Little Pear by Eleanor Francis Lattimore, and I'm sorry I didn't read, tell you the other authors of the other books, but we're in chapter three, or we just finished chapter three of Little Pear, and this is a story about a boy in China and just his adventures and his family and the mischief excuse me the mischief that he gets into and so far so good they both like this this is a sweet little story and um, and we're enjoying it the next book is Elephant Prince the story of Ganesh by Amy Novesky we have not gotten to this book yet, but this book takes place in India and it covers the elephant prince Ganesh and basically how he came about and got his elephant head. I have read ahead 
And so I know what happens, and I like the story, and I think they will too. And especially the illustrations are just colorful and beautiful. And I was not familiar with the story until reading this book, so I have learned a lot as well. Peek, a tie, hide and seek, which was a cute little book, just a simple story. Kind of young for my second grader and probably a little young for my kindergartner too. But they liked it. It was fun. Big cute illustrations. Red Kite, Blue Kite. And I keep forgetting to tell you the authors of these books, I'm sorry. By Jili Zhang. And this is about a little boy and his father during the China Cultural Revolution. And so the boy and his father communicate through flying these kites. And, it, and these are some of the pictures. My kids like this. Uh, they really enjoy flying kites. So this was a story that spoke to them. Especially, you know, to have that in common with someone else. And again, sort of a somber theme to it. Uh, as some of these books are. But... Again, I think that's good for them. I have no issue with introducing them to that kind of stuff. In the Moonlight Mist, a Korean tale by Daniel San Suchi or Sochi, Soki. Um, and this was a beautiful story uh, about a woodcutter who really wants a family and with the help of this deer, basically, uh, he's able to trick, with not ill intent, uh, a maiden uh, to stay down earth with him and have a family with him. And then, you know, there's these rules he has to follow, but he ends up losing her. And I don't want to give away the whole story, but it all wraps up with, through his selflessness, he is able to be reunited with his family. But this was a beautiful story. And my daughters really loved it. They loved the illustrations, you know, and the beautiful ladies. And they always love to hear about, my five-year-old in particular always loves to hear about goddesses. She's really big into goddess. So anything that has sort of an ethereal, womanly figure, she's all about. Another beautiful story we read was The Lotus Seed by Sherry Garland. And it's a reading rainbow book. We read this recently. And I only, we've only read it once. I'm going to read it again, as long as we have it. But uh, it's a beautiful story uh, about a Vietnamese family and how this lotus seed was transported from Vietnam by the matriarch, the grandmother in the family, and, you know, to America. And then... What happens is the lotus seed that she has treasured and kept with her throughout her life accidentally gets planted and, you know, she's very upset, but then something beautiful comes from it. It actually blooms and grows. And let's see if I can find that. There it is. So, just a good heartwarming story. And I have a craft uh, that we're going to do to go along with this book. So, we're definitely going to expound on this. This was a good book. Lan Popo, a Red Riding Hood story from China by Ed Young. Um, it's got the Can Caldecott, Caldecott medal. I don't know. Anyways, this was surprisingly a good story. I won't say surprisingly as if I expected it to be bad. I just wasn't expecting my kids to like it as much as they did. And they do. They keep asking me to read this. But as it says so clearly, it is a Red Riding Hood story from China. It's a version of it. It's definitely not the same story with a little girl, one little girl in the wood. It's about three sisters who trick the fox. You know, they're, and they never leave the house. They're at home and the fox comes to them. But they end up tricking and killing the fox themselves. And my five-year-old is all about Red Riding Hood stories. She loves Three Little Pigs and Red Riding Hood. So this was a big win for her and my second grader as well. And it's got beautiful illustrations. I love, I mean, how creepy is that? I love the wolf in this. Chandra's Magic Light, a story from Nepal. I've only read this once to the kids so far. 
another library book. It was good one. It was a good one. It's more of a modern tale about this girl's quest to get a solar lamp for her brother who's cough is bothered by the kerosene lamps they use and it just fit in nicely with our Asian theme and it's got pretty pictures and you know I was kind of well I wasn't surprised our library had so many Asian themed literature books for children that I had to really narrow it down there was a lot out there and I guess I shouldn't be surprised, but we've had harder times with other continents and countries that we've studied, but Asia has been a good one so far. There's tons of great literature out there, so I hope that what I've shared with you today is helpful in picking some literature whenever you and your kids get around to studying Asia or any Asian countries. Just really beautiful stories, lovely illustrations overall. And uh, I hope you enjoyed watching, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!